Coming up on today's episode, DAR rolls out their 1000 TBM, Airbus reveals new zero emissions concepts, and Greg Collier's Ace Maker T33 is damaged in a landing accident. Happy Friday and welcome to the show. I'm Sophie Herlock. DAR has rolled out their 1000 TBM from their TARB France assembly line. The aircraft, a TBM 940 version, was made for U.S.-based owner and operator James A. Hislop, with the official handover scheduled to take place later this week at DAR's Pompano Beach, Florida operation. Hislop is an experienced private pilot and investment banker who has served as a volunteer pilot with Mercy Flight Southeast, Angel Flights Northeast, and Patient Airlift Services. On this milestone, Nicholas Chavert, Senior Vice President of DARS Aircraft Division stated, Looking ahead to the next 1,000 TBMs, we maintain our firm commitment to continue delivering aircraft that provide the optimum combination of speed and operational efficiency for owners and operators, along with the highest levels of safety and protection for pilots, families, and passengers. Chabert also noted the number of TBMs produced since DAR's acquisition of this aircraft product line 10 years ago has surpassed the total built throughout the program's previous history. When the TBM originally was launched in the 1980s, there was some aviation sector skepticism about the market attractiveness of a pressurized single-engine turboprop airplane, with doubts whether the initial sales goal of 600 would be attained. Beginning with the cornerstone TBM 700's introduction in 1990, a strategy of continuous improvement has been pursued in evolving the family of very fast turboprop aircraft, ranging from airframe enhancements for the avionics and cabin to developments in the company's services and support offerings. We'll be right back with around the patch. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Introducing the new ELT-345 from Artex. This emergency locator transmitter, or ELT, boasts an industry low price, while providing the same quality and performance on which the Artex brand was built. GPS data is embedded within the first emergency transmission and provides search and rescue personnel with the aircraft location within 100 meters in less than a minute. Take to the skies knowing that you have the highest performing and reliable equipment on board. View our selection of ELTs and safety products at www.artex.com. Artex, your best last chance. Welcome back. It's time for today's trip around the patch. Boeing has announced a firm order for two 737-800 Boeing converted freighters from an unidentified customer, bringing the total number of orders and commitments for the aircraft to 134. On top of this, the company has secured agreements to open a new 737-800 BCF conversion line at Guangzhou Aircraft Maintenance Engineering Company Limited in China, as well as an additional conversion line for the wide-body 767-300 BCF converted freighter at ST Engineering Facility in Singapore due to strong market demand. Based on the popular next-generation 737, the 737-800BCF offers operators newer technology, lower fuel consumption, and higher reliability than other standard-body freighters. Bell Textron's Bell 505 Jet Ranger X program has accumulated more than 50,000 flight hours, with more than 260 Bell 505s operating a variety of missions across six continents and 55 countries. On this accomplishment, Program Director Eric Sinusa stated, Operators around the world continue to complement the aircraft performance and value in adding a Bell 505 to their daily operations. This milestone represents the platform's global growth and adoption as it enables operators to complete dynamic missions at an affordable cost. Some notable deliveries this year have included Southern Utah University Centaurium and public safety configured Bell 505s of Leon County and Alameda County. 
the International Test Pilot School has been awarded a contract to train Royal Canadian Air Force test pilots and flight test engineers. Following an international competition, ITPS was ranked first in a bid for a standing offer to train personnel from the Aerospace Engineering Test Establishment, the developmental and engineering testing arm, and flight test provider for the Canadian Armed Forces. ITPS is one of only four EASA-approved flight test training organizations for both fixed and rotary wing test pilots. Embraer has delivered a Phenom 100EV and a Phenom 300E to two separate Brazilian customers, marking the company's 250th business jet delivery in Latin America. The Phenom 100EV was delivered to an undisclosed industrial company, which selected the aircraft to maintain crucial business operations during the COVID-19 pandemic. And the Phenom 300E was delivered to AgroGem, an agribusiness company. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. If it looks good, it usually flies good. The Bristel series of aircraft is proof of that. Furthering their legacy of safety and efficiency, Bristel is proud to feature the Rotax 915 IS Turbo in the current lineup of aircraft. The 915 IS Turbo power plant offers more power than ever before in a light sport aircraft. Learn more about Bristel at www.sportflyingusa.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Airbus has unveiled three concepts for the world's first zero emission commercial aircraft, codenamed Zero E, which could enter into service by 2035. The first concept is a turbofan design with a range of over 2,000 nautical miles, capable of operating transcontinentally and powered by a modified gas turbine engine running on hydrogen rather than jet fuel through combustion. The liquid hydrogen will be stored and distributed via tanks located behind the rear pressure bulkhead. The next is a turboprop design, also powered by hydrogen combustion and modified gas turbine engines, which would be capable of traveling more than 1,000 nautical miles, making it a perfect option for short-haul trips. The third concept is a blended wing body design, in which the wings emerge with the main body of the aircraft, with a range similar to that of the turbofan concept. The exceptionally wide fuselage opens up multiple options for hydrogen storage and distribution, and for cabin layout. Airbus believes the use of hydrogen as a primary power source holds exceptional promise as a clean aviation fuel, and estimates it has the potential to reduce aviation CO2 emissions by up to 50%. On Tuesday, Greg Collier, who's known for bringing the earliest generation of military jets to airshows all over the country, substantially damaged his Ace Maker T-33 in a landing accident at Wyoming Cheyenne Regional Airport. Later that same day, Collier took to Facebook to explain what had happened. Was going to wait to say anything, but already getting texts, calls, and questions, so figured hear it from me first. We had hard landing at CYS due to a sudden wind shear slash gust slash a microburst or something of that nature, just as beginning to flare, which I could not arrest the descent rate. The right gear hit hard, and no time to spool up engine to help. Control input's pretty much ineffective. Right main collapsed from side stress slash hitting hard. I don't even remember doing it, but when we came to a stop, I went to shut her down, but I had already shut down the engine. Fuel pumps and electrical system. I had to turn back on the battery to open the canopy. Just thankful Cameron and I walked away. It was a wild ride one I hope to never experience again. No announcement has been made on the repairability of the jet. And that was our last story for the week. Thanks for stopping by. Be sure to like and subscribe before you go. You can also check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and to stay up to date on the latest aviation and aerospace news this weekend, head over to aero-news.net. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you again on Monday.